situation that is legitimately traumatizing. Oh if you can get Dan and have a three-way with my Trisha, I'll fucking buy you a for Like, I know I look crazy. I know I'm known as like this crazy person online. Like, I'm not crazy. I'm just so hurt. I'm, I'm so hurt. I think all this is bull. I think it's all mega. I got away with it. Pins me down to the couch. Like, get off of me. You need to apologize. You don't just fucking delete the tweets and hide. Okay, hi. So it is currently March 5th. I filmed this video on March 1st, but since then there has been a few things coming out that I feel like you should know before you actually watch the video. Number one, this is not meant to be a hate video. I don't want you going over to David or any of the Vlog Squad members and like canceling them. Literally no one learns anything from cancel culture. It's so, so toxic. This is purely just an explanation video of exactly what he did and why he should apologize. A lot of people know that David should apologize, but not exactly what for, because his team is currently taking down videos as well as banning Twitter accounts who have to do with his controversy or reposting clips that he has not yet apologized for. And I think that is extremely immature considering he had hurt so many people and now he's trying to pretend like it never happened at all. If you're trying to look like a better person, then apologize. That's literally the only thing that you can do to actually show that you have grown as a person instead of getting your friends to do it for you. Now, I do understand that last night Scotty Sire made a video basically exposing Seth and the lies that he had made in the H3 podcast, as well as vouching for David. And it is nice that he has his friends vouching for him, but at the same time, the only person that can learn from his mistakes are David himself. So I'll talk more about the Seth situation when I get to that portion in the video, but at the same time, he still needs to apologize for being in a situation where he was condoning his friends to do blackface. He made very messed up jokes, as well as saying the N-word, and for those things, he has not yet apologized for. And I do understand that about eight months ago during the Black Lives Matter movement. He did semi-apologize on his Views podcast. He just said that his past is very embarrassing and ashaming, which, you know, it is. <laughs> At the same time, the Views podcast only gets 500,000 views, contrary to his main channel, which gets 20 million subscribers. So I feel like if your apology means that much to you, you should promote it to your biggest audience. But for my own personal bias, I have a very love-hate relationship with David. I've talked to people who have known him in the past and says that he is the most genuine person ever and he is a changed man, but at the same time, by him not apologizing, it kind of says otherwise. That's all I wanted to say. Enjoy the video. Mr. David Dobrik. David was born in Slovakia, um, but later moved to a town in Chicago, Illinois called Vernon Hills, along with his siblings, Esther, Sarah, and Toby. He went to Vernon Hills High School. It wasn't that big of a shock to discover that David was putting out very racist tweets regarding the n-word and homophobic slurs etc etc i mean just look look at the diversity ratio of his high school honestly i would have expected nothing else obviously this was back in 2012 literally everybody was doing it that's still not an excuse also in high school is when he actually started making vines and started getting really big on vine his videos in the beginning consisted of just like funny videos with his friends all right these are my parents they beat me but it's not their fault because they're alcoholics comedy sketches, etc, etc. And it wasn't until he was about 17 years old where he started to reach a lot of followers very, very quickly. He decided not to take the traditional route of going to college and instead just moving out to LA with a bunch of other Viners and pursue his social media career. He moved to LA, he pursued Vine, and he also did YouTube a little bit at the time, but he was more of just like, a douche tuber sort of thing with like his risky thumbnails kill all straights i swear but while i was doing research for this video i painfully had to go back and watch a bunch of david's old vlogs and gabby hannah got so much criticism for leaving the vlog squad or even criticizing the vlog squad but when you look back at david's old videos literally the only time he would use gabby is for a seductive thumbnail or sexually pointed jokes. Hey baby, you walking or working? Trends. 
<laughs> Your pants. <laughs> you like that? Yeah, dude. Fuck yeah, dude. That was fucking hilarious. I had I didn't fucking hear one goddamn word you said, dude. How much do you weigh? Well, you have to take off like five pounds for Chipotle, six pounds for my hair, twenty pounds for my clothes. Extra fifty pounds, so you're at what? 295. Viner's get intimate, Viner with breast implants, flashing the camera, Viner makeout sesh, and so, so many more, all regarding to Gabby. And it's no surprise that he would do something like this because I mean, just look at the views. This was all in 2015, mind you. 2015, this was the era Vine was like sort of at its prime. Everybody was on Vine. All the Viners lived in like that big building. That is also around the time where he decided to move into a house with Scotty Sire, Zayn and Heath, Elton, and Toddy. And that is also when they started to make a lot more YouTube content together. November of 2015 rolled around and that is when it was released that David and Liza Koshy started dating. What was even crazier is that once he started dating Liza and he put Liza in the thumbnail, he realized how many views he would get, same with Gabby. So you can kind of see the timeline of when Gabby was in like every single thumbnail to slowly just not being in the thumbnail anymore and it being more and more of Liza. Rolls over 2016. I just realized I had unblended concealer. That is so embarrassing. Embarrassing. I'm so sorry for anyone who had to watch that. I was talking for so long. I am so sorry for anybody. That is embarrassing. So 2016, Vine went and then everybody would like, you know. So when Vine went dead, everybody was looking towards YouTube because YouTube was the only platform that you could genuinely gain money from. You can gain money from like Instagram, but mostly through sponsorships. YouTube was the only one that gave you an annual income for the stuff that you did. And this was the rise of Viners on YouTube, such as Danny Gonzalez, Drew Gooden, Curtis Connor, Cody Ko, Noel Miller, um, David Dobrik, Zayn, you know, the whole vlog squad. Remember earlier when I was talking about Gabby Hanna being less and less in the thumbnails and now it was more Liza Koshy? Well, take it back a little bit. June of 2016 is when he actually introduced Corinna. And once he realized how many views he was getting with Corinna, he got off of Liza and now was on this Corinna. Also around the time that Gabby didn't leave the friend group, but she was distancing herself from the vlogs. And since she was distancing herself from the vlogs, it was now Corinna that took her place. Before, Gabby was more of like a punching bag for all these like sexual and ho type jokes but now that Gabby had kind of distanced herself from the vlogs now who took her place was Corinna. Dick because you had too much dick in your ass last night. <laughs> Corinna don't smile you did too. <laughs> You're fucking sucking dick underneath the fucking sleigh when I found you. I was asking why I have a big hole in my jersey. So you can show off your tits. It's not that hard to figure out. That's not why I have a big hole. This next part in the vlog is some footage that I didn't have permission to use but I finally have permission for it and here it is. Corinna you had sex with Todd yesterday for the first time? Corinna, just spit it out. Yeah, did he oh, no, she oh, did God. She did spit it out. <laughs> <laughs> I literally was like, because he asked me, he's like, can I say this in the car? And I was like, no. And he's no, like, you worry. said I could. You're like, don't worry, people will think it's fake. And then you set it up by saying, this is 100% <laughs> true. And Corinna was now this, like, punching bag for sexual comments or sexual jokes. And she was just known as, like, the hoe of the group. I, like, totally forgot I needed to do makeup. <laughs> so since this longer form of content was very foreign to everyone there was a lot of like it literally looked like the Blair Witch Project <laughs> roommate Michelle is out we're gonna pull a little prank on her you can come over bitch I'm gonna bet me some money from smoke my cigarettes to my next fly bitch what's up the very first time they were going into long form content and through an experimental period of what works what doesn't David found his sort of niche and it was short form content like he was doing before short form comedy content instead of just doing skit by skit as he did on vine he would just do a compilation of skits in one video 2016 was also an uprise in David's content because he was sort of the vlogger for all viners you 
go to his videos and you see all your favorite Viners in his vlogs and that's what made him so appealing. So not only was he getting his audience to watch, he was getting Zayn's audience, Heath's audience, Scotty's audience, like all these millions and millions of followers were gravitating towards his videos because they know that their favorites are going to be in there. In the beginning, it was very innocent, very, you know, like, oh, we're just having fun, we're doing this, but it didn't take long until David started to gain a lot more subscribers on YouTube and it wasn't really fun anymore. You were now competing for camera time. Even the people who didn't know David wanted to be in David's vlogs because back then it was just such a big deal to be featured in something like that. People started to do crazy and insane things competing. That one person who, you know, really stuck it out was Jason Nash. Jason Nash is currently a 46 year old man with two kids and a ex-wife. To move to Hollywood before he had kids with his ex-wife, he was also just really into acting and stuff like that. Stay down, sir. How David and Jason even met was that Jason was obviously pretty big on Vine, but also he was doing a lot of stand-up comedy. A kid who sounds like a World War II Japanese general. <laughs> you bet your hands now, daddy! <laughs> Comes in, he stalks me. Daddy, 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 daddy. So that is how David and Jason met. And then since Jason was really trying to get his start in the acting industry, he would just kind of obey by David's commands. And Jason has made so many jokes in the past, like, oh my God, it's crazy how uh, my life is run by a 23 year old. But in reality, it's like, your life is run by a 23 year old. Around the time where David's vlog started to get a little bit more controversial, but no one even knew. Where he's our only black friend. Don't ruin this for me, okay? This is Alex, you probably already know. What's yeah. up? Hey, son, do you want something to drink? What'd you Come on, Alex. <laughs> and I think why no one knew is because everyone had just learned to love David so much. And I'm not saying like, oh, everyone else's fault. I was at fault too. I used to watch his videos and be like, wow, these are so good. Everybody loved David Dobrik. It didn't matter what the title was, what it was about. You clicked on it because you knew that it was going to be a good video. And so no one really bothered to read the title. It was a David Dobrik video. Obviously, you're going to watch. But at the time when David and Liza put up they were trying Japanese candy but when they were trying the Japanese candy making fun of the way that they speak <laughs> no it's called donut biscuits you're a mess up this one has hello kitty on it and it says it in English so I trust it five sushi rolls out of eight <laughs> no <laughs> it's called donut biscuits you're a mess up this one has hello kitty on it and it says it in English so I trust it five sushi rolls out of eight no <laughs> what I know, I just have to keep saying no. Oh yeah, yeah. <laughs> Not only does he do this once, but he does it twice. And the second time, he does it to their face. Jason, <laughs> you don't know Japanese. Two for one. I know a lot of people are gonna be like, Haley, it's not that deep. Like obviously if he was there, it was okay. But we see later in the video that just because the person was there doesn't mean that it was always okay. 2017 rolls around and this is also at the time where Jason and Trish start dating. And this is also around the introducing of Seth. And he, like most other people in the vlogs, was a punching bag. With this introducement of Seth in the vlogs, they would do clearly very racist things to Seth. It's a black guy! Yeah, it may be awkward at first, but I'm sure... What's going on? I believe that the source of the problem in not being educated on the topics of culture, if we can't be accountable for the stuff that we create, if we can't be accountable for our actions, then we will never make any progress. You guys probably remember this was one of David's like biggest vlogs. David had put together an entire scheme. He made a fake website, a fake email, 
a fake business and reaching out to Seth saying that he's going to be in a beef jerky commercial. Now, this was really big for Seth because Seth had just moved to Hollywood in hopes of being an actor. And so, of course, he told his family, he was like, oh my God, like I just got this huge deal. It's going to pay $2,500, which is a lot of money that could pay your rent and food. Seth looking into this company, seeing this fake website, this fake business, he's on board. He's like, oh my God, this is a real person that actually wants me for their commercial. What the commercial entails is that he was going to be sitting on a bed with a bunch of apes. David hired a fake director, a fake crew, a fake cast, fake everything, and made it look as real as possible to get Seth on the bed and all these people in ape costumes. And then he has to kiss one of the apes. But what he doesn't know is that it's Jason Nash. It's on your commercial, Seth. <laughs> He takes off the masks. It's Jason. Well, that's not true. I was here. about the Seth makeout thing is crazy. It's crazy. It's crazy. I said to you specifically, don't have a makeout with guys, girls, moms. I don't care. Like, oh, I don't What if he was in a movie and he had to do that? It's not a movie. It's David's vlogs. No one. He's You're here. And as I said, $2,500 is a lot of money and he ended up never seeing a dime from it. Hello, me again, remember? <laughs> like I said last night, Scotty put out a video basically exposing Seth and Seth made it a very big statement in the H3H3 podcast that he did not give consent to the ape commercial. But last night, Scotty had released some footage basically saying that yes, Seth did indeed give consent. There's a clip somewhere of Seth pranking Jason. Three, two, one, action. <laughs> I happen to like Seth's behavior. <laughs> this is like a, everybody's fucking around with each other here. We're all friends and like, we do dumb shit. David looked through his text messages and found one of Seth's numbers asking him to do the kissing prank a third time. Seth literally requested to do it a third time. Guys, this is a text from Seth from about two years ago. He goes, yo bro, I was thinking about it. I'm down for another kissing sketch. I said, haha, what do you mean? He goes, lol, I don't really care as long as you clout me up. I'm not gay, just don't care. And then he sends me this. I mean, yeah, I mean, I don't know. I mean, it's not really a big deal. I mean, it's the same shit, just, I don't know more open-minded. I don't know if Seth completely forgot about that or if he just hoped that David would never find it the way that he hoped that David had a new computer and didn't have the extra four hours of footage that surrounded the four minute and 20 vlog that included the bit of him consenting to the prank. David, <laughs> this motherfucker told me that this was gonna happen again. And I can always respect the fucking man that keeps his word. <laughs> you can tell by his reaction at the end of the video that he was pranked, it was all in good fun, and he gave permission beforehand. He gave David props on getting him with that prank a second time. And that could kind of be a break to kind of get me to the next level. And I'm like, oh shit, I just booked a commercial. Like, mm -hmm. hanging out with David and all this other stuff. This is awesome. Like, I'm super excited about it. I'm mm. calling my family. Like, hey, you know, like I'm about to oh. be in a commercial. Like, That's this is painful. good. And then, oh. We call like my family and be like, no, I just basically got sexually assaulted. Um, and she just started busting up laughing. I'm like, if my mom is laughing her yeah. ass off, How everyone many else are gonna laugh their fucking, their fucking ass, ass off. I think the magnitude of the lies you've been spreading are unforgivable and you should face repercussions. I don't know how you could lie about that. There's literal proof of you being so down for doing these bits. And now you're backtracking and saying, I was so uncomfortable, but I took the high road and just like played it off like I wasn't. You asked to do it a third time. And so David says, let's, let's come to a 2500 agreement and obviously seth is like no i don't want your money i just want you to take it down actually when a friend is is telling you that they're dealing with legitimate I'm, pain yeah and, and then your your next motive is to be like oh well well how much money do you want yeah. wow you want to keep it up it's like i it's, don't want the money i want respect it's disrespectful like I was saying earlier, um, how David's young impressionable audience will look at these people being humiliated and think it's okay to say these jokes because that's exactly what Seth was receiving on the streets. I got the sun, hold on. Seth would literally be in the streets just walking somewhere or driving somewhere 
and people will come up to him making ape noises or saying very disgusting jokes towards him. Seth couldn't handle all of this. Seth actually quite recently went on the H3H3 podcast saying it was very, very embarrassing. It was so embarrassing to the fact that Seth actually had to leave Los Angeles and go to Atlanta just for an escape. End up moving to a different state to kind of get away from it so it's not like people coming up to me left and right bringing up a situation that is legitimately traumatizing to wow. me. So, uh about a month goes by seth goes to atlanta he realizes what am i doing in atlanta i don't really want to be here like i miss los angeles and so at this time things were kind of settling down people were sort of forgetting about it he comes back to los angeles right and david hits him up and is like hey would you mind filming with us? Seth literally went to David's apartment right after he dropped in LA, like at, from the airport to the apartment. David basically tells him like, you're gonna make out with Corinna, but then Corinna's gonna come back in a old man costume. They go, okay, well actually Corinna, we need to put more padding on you. And so then they go back into the room, but instead of putting more padding on Corinna, they actually just put Jason in the costume. Jason comes out in this old man costume. Seth thinks that it's Corinna. He makes out with her for a good amount of time. Really making out with Jason. <laughs> Shut the fuck up! <laughs> oh! Like I wanted to do, I want you to like make out with Corinna and um you know like are you cool with that and i was just like yeah no i'm fine with making out with corinna like that's fine i don't understand exactly what this bit's for but i'm just trying to basically just get it over with so i can you know go home and get some rest and then um you know during the video we kind of start the make out so it's going and then it's going on for a, a decent period of time and then after jason pulls off his mask and i realized that you know i just was touched by someone that you know, I did not, you know, consent to having their, their tongue. It'd be fun to blatantly ask him for consent. Do I have permission to try to prank you again and get you to make out with Jason? I'm very confused by that because how the hell could you be so confident to tell me that I have to consent to something that I'm not going to know that I'm going to do? <laughs> David films hours and hours of footage and crams them into 4 minutes and 20 seconds for his vlog. So this clip was cut short to not actually show Seth giving his consent, but showing David asking for the consent. Now, do you think David would go and film this bit if Seth had said no? No. He even says in the H3H3 podcast why he didn't, like, say anything or why he didn't erupt in anger. You know, I, I, I it was it was a split decision. I was like, it's one or two things. Like, mm -hmm. either be natural instincts and be the angry black guy in the room and mm -hmm. start yelling at everyone and get physical or whatever that might that might entail. Or I can kind of just, you know, go along with it and, you know, maybe I'll have some new friends that, you know, will will support me in, in, in my ventures moving forward. Embarrassment started to come back and obviously he couldn't run away to Atlanta again. So what he did was just drop the friend group in general. I'll talk about Big Nick's story from him being in the vlog squad from about 2016 to again 2018. He left at the same time Seth left. A lot of his jokes surrounded the fact that he had dwarfism. Sick, an empty Lamborghini. Oh, my bad dog. Put <laughs> your head into a bunch of melted airheads. <laughs> Finally, I can make fun of something that you weren't born with. <laughs> oh my god, I don't know why this is so adorable. Why have we never thought of this before? <laughs> he is Big fucking Nick. cute. Nick. <laughs> Look at that. I can do that all fucking day. Come on back. I want to make the thing is, is like I'm not really sober right now, so I felt like I was flying. <laughs> yeah. Cards have disappeared. Do you believe it? No. You don't believe it? No. Alright, check them out. Have a look. Have a look at my pronouns. Now make him taller. He <laughs> <laughs> goes boom. <laughs> So those are jokes that you can make about yourself, but when other people make those jokes of you, it's a lot different. You don't have any room to say those jokes, like those are my coping mechanisms. And that's exactly what it was for Big Nick. Even though David Dobrik was now continuing to make these dwarf jokes, it was Big Nick that was giving him the green light to make these jokes. David was his friend, so he was like, yeah, it's fine, like I don't care. But it was the point where, same thing with Seth, he would go out to places and people would make fun of his dwarfism because they saw David do it. And so if David did it, then it must be okay. Because it also got to a point where people would recognize me in public 
And then they would make jokes like about me. And I'm like, dude, like, I don't know you. This is weird, you know? So like what was, kind of jokes? Like Just like mean? making fun of my height and stuff. Oh. And I, just because David did it. And it was said that when Big Nick went up to David and was like, hey, I don't want these dwarf jokes being in the blogs anymore. David was completely fine with it. He was like, yeah, okay. But then he just never put Nick in the blog again. He told him like, dude, I don't want to make these jokes anymore. Hmm. And he was just like, okay, like, that's fine. Like he was chill about it, whatever. Um, and I knew by saying that I wasn't going to be in the content anymore. It's like, all right, like I respect that bro. And then that was that. And it wasn't like, Oh, that um, sounds fucked up. I got to actually interject. You said, yo, I just, I don't want you to make fun of my height anymore. And that was, and he's like, okay, well, there's no point of having you in the vlogs then. Right. That was kind of the that doesn't message seem very, that I got. That but, doesn't sound like, very good to me. He never vocally said that, you know what I mean? But that was for sure the vibe. Right? And that's what it was. He said the environment that, like, it was okay to make fun of me. And then, like, everybody else. But you know what? I got to give a shout-out to Scotty because, like, he was one of the only people that really, like, stuck up for me and, like, said, like, hey, I, I don't like what, you know, the jokes that you're making about. <laughs> Really? Like he, wow. Good guy. He, he vocalized he didn't like it. That's and nice. Honestly, I got to give props to Scotty. He was probably one of the most mature people in that conversation. And even Jason, like, at a certain level, did hmm. stick up for me. And, like, you know, like, I do like some of those people in there, but majority of people just were like, yeah, you know what? Like, we're just going to do this. We're going to make fun of Nick because our, our leader is doing it, you know? This was also the year that um, Dom sexually assaulted a bunch of girls at 2017 VidCon, which again, like most situations, just got sweeped under the rug, even if the girls came forward and said their stories. Dancing, we're talking. He's asking me to make out with him, to kiss him. And at first I was just like, I don't even know you, sorry. Like we just met, what do you mean? Trying to make it into more of a joke, but he's being really, really pushy. Eventually takes us to this balcony where there's a bunch of other people. And I sit down and he gets on top of me, like straddles me, pins me down to the couch. And I think it's like a joke for a second, like he's gonna let go or something, or he's gonna try to give me a lap dance or something stupid because there was still music playing out there. But he literally doesn't move. He has me pinned down on the couch. Like I'm just sitting normally and he's facing me with his knees on my knees, like holding me down and pinning down my arms. And he gets really close to my face and is like, kiss me. And I'm like, no, I don't do PDA. There's a bunch of people out there, like get off of me. He's trying to make small talk with me, flirty, like, hey, if I guess your bra size, then will you make out with me? And I was like, no, let me off. He unpins one of my arms and he reaches down my shirt, like caresses my boob. And I'm like, what are you doing? I literally pulled his hand off of me. And he's like, you really expect me to guess without feeling them first? And I was like, dude, just get off of me. And then he guesses the bra size, he gets it wrong. And I say, okay, like get off now. And someone comes over and starts talking to him, like making conversation. So he gets up and at that point I stand up and I start walking towards the door and I walk straight back to my friends, like literally bolt back to my friends. I am aggressive when talking to women, uh, I will say that. And there's a difference between being forward and persistent, but what I was doing was just too intense, and now I'm working on that. A few videos, but I need to respect people's boundaries more. Got swept under the rug without anybody even knowing about it, because I didn't even know about it. At this point, Gabby was just gone. A lot of really, really dark shit that goes on behind the scenes of the YouTube community, and obviously not all of it. Like, there's, of course, perfectly lovely, normal people, but there's just also a lot that's it's hard to live with once you know it and once you see it. And it was like, for years, I've been living this weird matrix where the more you hurt people, the bigger you get. And if you dare to challenge something that you feel is wrong, then you're fucking ruined. So Seth left, Big Nick left, and Dom left. And so they decided to go off and do their own thing. 2018, it was a running on joke but to the point where it wasn't even a joke anymore that Jason wanted to have a threesome with 19 year old Tana Mojo. Why me, Jason? You, you can do better. Cause he likes broken you girls. <laughs> It happened once in a vlog where Tana was invited to David's house and David proposed to her the idea that Trish and Jason wanted to have a threesome with. and Trish had no idea. And oh my God, something that's so crazy about this thing is that the way that Jason was pawning off Trish was the same way that Shane pawned off Garrett and everybody canceled Shane but didn't cancel David. If you can get Dan to have a three-way with me, Patricia, I'll fucking buy you a Ferrari. I'll 
do anything. I'll be your slave for a year. Are you serious? I'm dead serious. You'll buy me a Ferrari. I, I can't buy a Ferrari, but I mean, I'll, I'll put a lot of money towards a Ferrari. You'll buy me a Ferrari. Give $100,000 back. This is our ass. Okay. You know I'm like taken though, right? Sure, whatever. Okay, because I just feel like you're about to ask me to fuck someone. No. Okay. <laughs> um, would you have a threesome with Jason and Trisha? <laughs> This joke was happening and Trish obviously was super, super uncomfortable with it because Trish has came out in the past about her body positivity issues. The blonde hair, the fake tan, look pretty much the same, except Tana is smaller. And so with these comments, it made Trish feel extremely bad about herself. And Trish vocalized these concerns to David and Jason, but just pushed her off as that if she was being dramatic. Of Jason saying, you know, he would buy David a Ferrari if he could get the threesome with Tiana and me. And it's just like the whole thing. We've always talked about threesomes. I'm so insecure. I hate cheaters. I hate people cheating or wanting to cheat or like I'm not good enough. When these jokes would arise, Trish wouldn't have anything else to do but just kind of laugh like she didn't know what to do like they already knew that she felt super uncomfortable. What else could she do? It's so difficult because a lot of people can say, oh, well, obviously he cared about his friends. He bought them all like these cars and these houses. But it's like you can't like do your friends wrong. And then as an apology, cover up all the things that you did wrong with materialistic things such as money or houses or cars. So like it kind of makes me think. Now, this is just me thinking. There was probably something that David did or something that David put in that someone in the vlog squad didn't like. And so as a peace offering, he gives them a car or a house or a, a large sum of money or something like that, sort of as a peace offering. And since he's gonna give it to them, just be like, okay, yeah, might as well film it. And so at this time, there was a member of the vlog squad named Brandon Cal Cavillo. Cavillo. Brandon. Some weird stuff came about him in a vlog. Okay, so now listen, because this is... <laughs> this is gonna take a few brain cells. Brandon has a girlfriend named Lacey, right? Lacey was born on March 14th, 2000, right? So March 14th, 2000, David posts a video in February of 2018, making Lacey 17 years old at the time. Now in this vlog, Brandon says that he has been seeing Lacey for about a month. In the car, David asks Lacey how Brandon is in bed and she replies, really good. Is Brandon good at sex? Honestly, yeah. <laughs> Hell yeah, Brandon, what's up? I'm not <laughs> Implying that they have slept together and Lacey being 17 years old. Apparently through Trish, everybody knew that he was dating a 17 year old. Brandon and her have said that they were having sex. They tried to like say that they weren't. They were, and everyone knew, including Jason. The person who went to high school with Lacey and was like, yeah, Lacey's literally 17. She went to my high school. And through that is how people found out her birthday. They don't even say anything about it. For an entire year, they don't speak about it. Fast forward a few months, still 2018, David is now having his homophobic tweets resurfaced. With these homophobic tweets being resurfaced, David, again, says literally nothing about it. He just deletes the tweets and moves on. But you know who does say something about it? Elijah Daniel. In David Dobrik's case, fag, but with three Gs. The N word, <laughs> multiple times. And this is fucking David Dobrik, fucking Prince of YouTube. You need to apologize. You don't just fucking delete the tweets and hide. It's not your fucking growing up. I grew up on a fucking farm and I still know that shit was bad to say back then. Elijah basically sticks up for David. And since Elijah being such a big YouTuber, everybody was like, okay, <laughs> we love you, David. Like continues to stay quiet and pray that it goes away. Well, 2019 Brandon's situation with his 17 year old girlfriend is still not going away. So he's like, ugh. <laughs> I guess we gotta make a video about it. Lacey actually lied to Brandon saying that she was 18 when she actually wasn't. And you would think that after a big trust issue like that, you would just break it off, but they did not. And one of the first comments is from a girl that said she went to your school like a long time ago. Mm -hmm. And she said, I knew Lacey in school. 
She was born March 1st, 2000. She's 17 years old. And I read that and I just went, oh, oh my God, like. Yeah, the, just especially with the whole video, the whole entire situation just looked really bad. It looks terrible. And so I called you and I asked, is this true? Yeah, and I said, yeah, it's true. I understand if you never want to talk to me again, if you never want to see me again, it's fine. And I just, I freaked out. I didn't know what to do. So I, I called David and he just was like, dude, everything's fine. They're just 2019 was also the year that not only David was getting in a little bit of trouble, but also Scotty. There was some videos that resurfaced about Scotty saying the N word and a bunch of really, really messed up things on his Facebook. But you know what Scotty did? He apologized for it. He apologized for it. He said, you know, I'm not that guy anymore. And that was done. Obviously, most of his apology isn't my apology to accept, but at least he took notice of his mistakes and told his audience, yeah, you should not say these things. You should not do the same things that I did because it is messed up. And I want you to understand that like I understand that. And that is exactly what David needs to do because David has such a bigger audience and younger impressionable audience than anyone else in the vlog squad. Trish and Jason ended up breaking up. Trish made a video talking about the breakup. Like, I know I look crazy. I know I known as like this crazy person online like i'm not crazy i'm just so hurt in life. i'm so hurt and then in response jason also made a video talking about the breakup um i'm a good person i loved her i bent over backwards and tried to make her happy I tried to do everything i could and i don't know i think i don't i think all this is bull i think it's all 2019 was also when all of the allegations of like, maybe David really doesn't care about his friends started to come out. All of these college students were coming out because as if you've ever seen David's videos, he used to attend a lot of UCLA frat parties and a lot of the college students started to come out who were at those parties and being like, yeah, David was the only sober one because there was no one to film if he wasn't sober. So he would make his friends take shot after shot, even if they didn't want to, just to get them drunk and film them doing crazy things. And so he could post it online. With all of the embarrassing things that Zayn did, I don't doubt that there was at least one time where Zayn was like, David, do not put that in. Like, that's really embarrassing. I don't doubt that he, there was some sort of altercation where Zane said no and David did it anyways. David was always filming his friends since the very beginning. It really was never about him doing crazy things or what he's doing. When his friends would get drunk, he would film his friends getting drunk. He wanted his friends to do blackface his friends would do blackface. He tried to use money as a band-aid. Girl, 2020, that is when, that was probably the worst year for literally everyone. So 2020 was probably the start of David's semi-downfall. Since, as you know, David is a very, very big celebrity. A lot of people know about him. Nickelodeon has given him a job. He's always with big celebrities like Kendall Jenner, Kylie Jenner, Howie Mandel, and he is sort of an A-list celebrity. The thing about being an A-list celebrity is that now you have A-list publicists and managers. When you do things like this, like making your friends do blackface or saying the N-word, you have A-list people to sweep that underneath the rug as fast as possible or pay off certain news outlets to cover stories that don't have to do with your controversies, such as when you type in David Dobrik, you would think that the most recent things would be about his controversial past because Trish has been posting about it constantly. New York Times and The Hustle, two very, very popular news outlets, are posting about David's app. Rather, smaller news outlets are posting about his controversies. Clearly, news outlets know about his controversies, but why is it that the biggest ones are covering the opposite. An app that literally I've never heard of. <laughs> 2020 is when Trish went on her entire rants. And honestly, 
I have a love-hate relationship with Trish. I really do feel like Trish means well. She just has a lot of mental illness issues that kind of get in the way of what she's trying to say or the person that she's trying to be. Trish decided to let loose. She was like, I'm not, you know, covering up anymore. This is what happened. And I don't care if it makes me look bad or crazy. She was dating Jason for two years. She was in that vlog squad for two years. David is an A-list celebrity with A-list publicists and managers. When people did come out with footage that was not, you know, known to the public, they were taking down videos and striking small channels and still are, like myself, I only have like 2,000 subscribers, so I'm a very small YouTuber, striking channels that had to do with his controversial past or showing events that he has not apologized for. So low, so immature. If you are trying to make yourself look like a good person, then apologize because right now that is embarrassing. The fact that you rather, unless he's just not sorry, if he's not sorry, that would make so much more sense. <laughs> Trisha, in one of her videos, was talking about how Jason was literally hanging out with eight-year-old kids. And I didn't think that this was true until I went to his channel and he's literally hanging out with children. Jason! Yo, what's up? My name is Jason. I love TikTok. I love sports. I love basketball. Madison Rojas, I'm 11 years old. I'm a professional dancer and actor, and I've been in El Kakui, Jane the Virgin, and American Housewives. Yo, Madison, I saw you get paparazzi the other day outside of Boa. Yeah. It's pretty sick. Yeah. So what do you like, call them or? No, they just found us. Oh, they found you down there? Mm -hmm. Oh, really? If you want to go to Boa some night, my mom can drive if yours can pick up. Oh, that's cool, yeah. Cool, man. Let's meet up. 46 years old and you're just hanging out with a group of 13 year olds. Oh my God. So frustrating because I was literally, I was talking to my friends before I made this video and I was like, yeah, I'm gonna do a video about David Dobrik. And they were like, why, what did he do? And I was like, it was so obvious that exactly what David's team was doing was working because people still didn't know about what he did because his A-list team cared more about damage control than they did genuine people's feelings. Even Liza Koshy apologized. Remember how earlier in the video I was like, oh yeah, Liza and David made a video basically mocking the Japanese culture and the way that they speak. Liza apologized. But by screen recording a Word document for two minutes. Now that is not my apology to accept. So I can't say anything about it, but I can say it's probably not the best one. 2020 was also the year within the Black Lives Matter movement, Seth then came out with a video saying David was a terrible person to me when we were friends. Now it's two people, not just Trish, saying that David was a bad person and they were people that were actually friends with him. Seth comes out and shows a bunch of deleted clips and raw footage from David. Mega! Looking at those girls, yeah. So what we got? got away with it. That song by Kid Cudi is called No, No Nigger. I think the song is called Day and Night. Copper Toe, nigga! <laughs> but niggas that don't really do shit, I swear y'all be doing them all. It's our job as influencers is to influence and we are not influencing our culture and our generation in the right direction if we continue to create like this. So yes, Seth was sort of greenlighting the thing, but at the same time, that's really no excuse to be making those jokes in the first place. Seth comes out, releases this footage, and he also releases a clip of Aaron 
Guilfoy, who is a member of the vlog squad, saying the n-word. But once this footage was resurfaced, Aaron then made a very mature apology video basically saying, I'm sorry. For those of you who don't know, there are videos of me surfacing from about 10 years ago that I want to first and foremost take complete ownership of. Thinks that my motives for supporting the Black Lives Matter movement are for the sole purpose of a PR move because I haven't said anything about it. So regarding that whole Aaron situation, obviously I'm not going to show the footage because oh my god, but Seth actually ended up releasing to social media, which was not the right move to make. And you sharing videos that I never consented to have being filmed in the first place is disgusting. And I tried for a long time to ignore it because I get sexually harassed because of this. I've never been violated like that in my life. And in retaliation for this, years later, you post our friend's naked body on the internet? It's revenge porn. It's legal. It's fucked up. Saying to people, yes, I did make these mistakes. I understand my mistakes. And you guys should understand that what I did was wrong and that you shouldn't do the same. Nonetheless, it came out. Aaron apologized. Life went on. Trish then made the Frenemies podcast with H3H3. That is when all of the more, more David T started to come out. Nah, David also shouldn't have done it. Period. It's not right. Oh, look at the Japanese food. We're trying. <laughs> Ooh. Nigga. Shoot some black people. Oh, uh, we're cops. Oh, gosh. 2021 approaches. Seth and Big Nick, since again, they're not with David, they don't really have as big of a platform as they used to. They get on the H3H3 podcast, who does have a huge audience, and gives them a voice that will be heard. I would hear them, like, talk badly about each other um, mm. when, like, another person wasn't there. Like, they would make fun of Alex. They would say, like, oh, like, one day Alex is going to come in here and, like, shoot all of us. And they were all, like, making fun of him. Mm. Because, like, Alex just wanted to live, like, a normal, simple life. And they all just called him crazy. And, like, so I would just hear that gossip. And I'd be like, dude, what are they saying about me mm -hmm. when I'm not here? You know, like, people in that group talking badly about David when they weren't around or when David wasn't around. And I'm like, whoa, like that kind of was like, I'm, they're even talking, they're even gossiping about the leader. <laughs> like, that's crazy to me because it's like, oh, they're for sure saying stuff about me when I'm not around in their group chat. Or why they left the vlog squad and why David is a bad person, then just justifying what Trish has been saying all along. And it also justifies what Gabby has been saying saying as well, saying like, we're not crazy, they're just making us look like it. And as I said earlier, like David's team basically just attempting damage control. When you type in Seth Ape commercial David Dobrik, you would think that the first thing to come up would be someone reposting that clip or something, especially with it being such a hot topic right now. But when you do, that does not come up at all. Any of David's controversies when you type them into YouTube or Google does not come up. And again, further confirming my point that David's A-list team cares more about damage control than they do their audience. Something I didn't even realize or notice, Seth actually brought this up in his H3H3 podcast, is that when the Black Lives Matter movement was going on, literally showed no black people in his videos after Seth. And so when the Black Lives Matter movement was going on, Jason did the most white man thing ever, collabed with two black content creators. His skits, and I love Batch, and I, and I love Day Storm, and I, and, I, and I miss Paige Kennedy and all that. You get a wake up call, which is now. Right. And I've been woken up. And you see them, white white supremacy, uh, KKK. Mm -hmm. They're you know they're people racist with, people with past issues. Exactly. Yeah. Be quiet. I'm doing a toast for niggas that don't really do shit. I swear I'll be doing them. Yeah. Literally the most white man thing ever. Being like, see guys, I'm not racist. I'm sitting next to two black people. Even though he has never made a single video with them ever, he has never proved that he was friends with them beforehand, 
he's just friends with them for the time being. You could clearly tell that King Batch was super uncomfortable throughout that video because you could tell there was no chemistry. Like you can totally tell that they have just never really talked before. And I know since a lot of people are gonna bring it up in 2020, David actually did lightly apologize. He did it in a very small portion of an hour long podcast that wasn't even titled anything to do with his apology. And he did it on the Views podcast where it only has half a million viewers instead of the 20 million viewers that he has on his main channel. Because I, I want to be a good role model for the people watching. And I'm ashamed and I'm embarrassed about some of the things I did in videos or in vines or whatever I was doing. And genuinely, I genuinely feel awful about it. And I'm going to do better actively and I'm, and I'm going to do that consistently. And, and you know, you have my word for that. And I promise that. And if I'm anything, I'm a man of my word. So I think why he decided to apologize on that platform is because he has the least amount of audience on there and that's typically what people will do. People will take to their Twitter to apologize for things because they know Twitter is the platform that they have the least amount of followers on. 2020 was also the year that so many people started to get exposed for their racist past and it is big part of the Black Lives Matter movement that this happened. There are a lot of people coming out and vouching for David and saying he's not that person anymore. Anymore. He doesn't do stuff like that anymore. Like I know David and I know he wouldn't do anything like that anymore. But the thing is, is that people can't apologize for your own mistakes because no one is going to learn from your mistakes except you. Tell your audience that this is what I did wrong and this is why you shouldn't do it either. What's so crazy about this entire situation is that David is trying to run away from his mistakes so much is that he knows that people are starting to pick up on the bad things that he has done. So he has been doing things like having the D'Amelios on his podcast, coming out with a new app, and basically just trying to divert the conversation than what is supposed to be talked about. And it's so crazy that like, David truly got David Dobrik privilege. If you put clips that Jake Paul has done and got canceled for and put them right next to David Dobrik doing the same exact thing, they're literally the same. I whip it. Like my nigga Richie. <laughs> nigga! I feel like when you were in Spain, your English got worse. Yeah? Really? Okay. okay. Thank you, man. Not a compliment. Put your head into a bunch of melted airheads. <laughs> Finally, I can make fun of something that you weren't born with. <laughs> Must be this tall for the visa. Let me see. Oh. oh wow. Man! Sick because you had too much dick in your ass last night. Karina, don't smile, you did too. <laughs> it's mostly because everyone loves David Dobrik. All the guys want to be him, all the girls want to be with him. And I know it's hard to own up to your mistakes, but at the same time, it is something that you should do because it makes people feel a lot better and it makes people feel like that you genuinely care about them and you're not just shoving it underneath the rug because you don't want to deal with it. And it's crazy because like, People always say, oh, it was 2012, it was a weird time. No, they were doing blackface two years ago. They were saying the N-word two years ago. This isn't some 2012 drama. This was recently. That's the video. Um, I hope you guys enjoyed it. And if you did, make sure to give it a thumbs up and subscribe. Thank you guys for 3,000 subscribers. I just hit 3,000 subscribers. <laughs> Thank, Thank you, Lord. Lord. If there's any other people that you want me to talk about next, leave that in the comments below. Thank you guys so, so much for watching these videos. It really does mean a lot to me that you guys are enjoying these videos because I truly do love making them and this isn't supposed to be a hate video or a cancel video don't go over to David or any of his friends and cancel them cancel culture is so toxic literally no one learns anything from being canceled the people who came forward and did apologize they at least made an effort to show that they are a better person now before all of this I also did listen to uh, Zayn and Keats podcast which that's my own issues, you know? Like, uh, so moral of the story, stream frenemies. I went for a like, Miley Cyrus Dua Lipa sort of hair. Is it working? I don't know, I don't have my glasses on, so I can't really see anything. Hopefully David doesn't upload his apology video while I'm editing this video because that would be embarrassing. 
on my part. So yeah, hopefully you guys enjoyed this video and do something that makes you happy today.